Welcome to Lokomotiv Stadion in Moscow for Russia against Argentina. The pick of a week of international action that onlookers tend to enjoy and club coaches watch with a great deal of trepidation. Without question, a day that Russian football fans have been waiting for as Moscow welcomes Maradona. A warm-up for Husidink's side ahead of the final push for South Africa and a chance to pacify the Russians inside this stadium who frowned upon his Premier League honeymoon with Chelsea. Even though Russia are ahead of Argentina in the FIFA World Rankings, there's a feeling of awe among the Russian fans as they watch Argentina in their capital city. But there is still a very real threat that the great Argentina will fail to make the World Cup finals for the first time in 40 years. For Hushidink, it's all about Russia rather than Chelsea these days. And perhaps an inconvenience for Andre Arshavin, his new captain at international level. But still a chance to pit himself against some of the greatest players in the world. For Maradona, a 100% record in friendlies runs parallel to a real slide in World Cup fortunes. He needs a result today. Friendly or not, both sides need to win for very different reasons. Maradona says he could well have done without this trip to Russia, especially at the start of the European club season. If he isn't careful, and his players aren't careful here, then there is a great possibility that he'll miss out on a trip to South Africa in his current capacity as Argentina coach at the very least. Chance for the players to soak in the atmosphere whilst the seemingly endless reading of the two teams is portrayed across the Lokomotiv Stadion. Almost as many cameramen inside the stadium as Maradona has hangers on, criticized in Argentina for bringing a staff of 23, and that's before you even start the players. Here are the anthems. LDF needs a result here, but his eyes are on the qualification game against Brazil next month, which could be the key to their fortunes. Russia, far better placed for the World Cup. There'll be some noise here for their anthem.
football in Russia has all of a sudden assumed a patriotic fervor similar to that in England at the start of the 1990s. Their run to the semi-finals of the European Championships last summer really did galvanize the nation, but this will be a huge test. Quite a few big names missing for Maradona. There's no Lionel Messi in the starting lineup, but Aguero is here. Also Liverpool's Javier Mascherano, but no Carlos Tevez at the request of Manchester City, although he is expected to be fit for Blackburn Rovers at the weekend. In an experimental set of formations from Argentina, they're expected to start 4-4-2 with Aguero partnered by Diego Milito, who's fresh, or perhaps not so, from the Italian Super Cup in Beijing at the weekend. For Jose Dink, well, it's the tried and trusted for him, but no Yuri Zhirkov, the Chelsea man who plays at left-back for his country, is replaced by Renat Jambev on his home ground. And Arsenal's Andre Arsiavian, who we'll see for the first time in Premier League action this season on ESPN on Saturday evening, is partnered up front by Alexander Kurjakov of Dinamo, the man who did play his trade for a couple of years, of course, in Spain with Sevilla. Frank de Blake from Belgium, an experienced official, takes charge of this game. We'll start with a moment of reflection. Мы просим вас почтить минуты молчания, память замечательных футболистов и всех, кто стали жертвами этого трагического события. Dear friends, 30 years ago, on the 12th of August 1979, in the catastrophe, died an outstanding football team. From Tashkent. We kindly ask you to honor a minute of silence, the memory of such an outstanding football team and of all the others who became a victim of this tragic event. Formalities out of the way at the Lokomotiv Stadion. We will have some international friendly action of the highest caliber. It's Mariano Andujar, who has already been promised a place against Brazil in the Rosario friendly. It is Argentina against Brazil in the World Cup qualification game that could well define his coaching career. He knows that this is a big night, Russia against Argentina. A friendly in name it may well be. But for both he and Rusirink will be quite an important pointer as to where the respective nations go for their next World Cup qualifying battles. Russia with a big trip to Wales to look forward to next month. Already with a chance to bear down thanks to Arshavian's ball to Kerjakov. To really showing a firm understanding in the Finland qualification victory for Russia in June. But Jakov scoring twice after a pretty lengthy exile. What a start that would have been against Argentina. For Maradona, you feel that many of the players who are available to him here will be seen as fringe players when it comes to Rosario. Is there a question mark over Jonas Gutierrez of Newcastle United who started the season in the English second tier? The Newcastle at West Bromwich Albion at the weekend. He could well move in the near future, but for Hiddink, things much more of a constant with Russia is largely selected from the leading clubs. Interesting that only Sergei Shemak in midfield for Russia belongs to the champion club Rubin Kazan.
Girianov. Looking for the return ball, the is in it, St. Petersburg man. Shielded in the end. Late developer, Konstantin Girianov. Starts on the left side for Russia here. He actually given his first international call up at the age of 28 by hitting. Rodriguez before Finisov strange fortunes for Maradona since taking over from Rafael Vasile he's actually won five of the seven games in charge but still Argentina have slipped towards the qualification trapdoor in South America Match against Brazil is absolutely massive, followed by a trip to Asuncion to face Paraguay. Here's Gutierrez, and the pressure for his plays from Napoli's Jesus Tatolo, but he's done well here, Gutierrez of Newcastle. Actually went through the legs of Jan Beev, the left fullback who pushed inside. But perhaps the Achilles heel of Russia, just exposed there by the pace of Gutierrez. Who it's believed is a target for Greek side Olympiakos. Without Zhirkov and Vladimir Bistrov, Russia are shorn of their two paciest weapons, Arshavi notwithstanding. Structural stability of the Russian national side posed against the attacking flair of Argentina. Even without Tevez and Juan Sebastian Verón, the former Manchester United and Chelsea man who's got a new lease of life back in Argentina with Estudiantes de la Plata. Record breaking Zanetti. This is the ball from right back. Another of those players who played in the Italian Super Cup at the weekend. Forward from Anyukov. Still yet to be confirmed whether Russia will play Germany in this stadium or at the Luzhniki, which was the scene of that Manchester United Chelsea Champions League final last year. There's a sense among the Russian players that they enjoy the atmosphere here far more than at the Luzhniki, which holds. Almost three times as many spectators. Over 80,000 there. Rather like Argentina in their move away from El Monumental for that huge Brazil game next month. I like the fervency of the support that comes with the arena. That's Balati. Now Gutierrez and Heinze. Rather fired in by Gutierrez. Frank de Blake had a look at that from Girianov, decided it wasn't an intentional back pass, but Russia pressured by Milito. Diego Milito has never really been able to nail down a place in the Argentine side. You get to shine here, but there's not enough room to work with ultimately. Renat Kambev largely thought to be the best fullback in Russia, but of course, Zhirkov's attacking dimension gives him extra kudos for coach Hiddink, who was the first really to employ him as a left back in Austria and Switzerland last summer.
Inza with the Argentina throw in. Argentina's players have come from far and wide. And it's selecting from a squad much closer to home. And the Tottenham fans among you watching this fixture who wonder just where is Roman Pavlyuchenka. The Tottenham striker is among the substitutes here. Having delayed his flight to Moscow so he could compete for Tottenham try and impress. Harry Redknapp at the weekend. The last pre-season friendly for Spurs. Here's Julianov. Simshov. And four from Zenit St. Petersburg in this side. Part of a Dutch revolution in coaching. The Russian sides, Hiddink in the national side and Nick Advocat with Zenit, but Zenit actually sacked Advocat at the start of this week. Milita's escape foiled by the felling of Ignashevich. Off. Cynical, the challenge on the left sided player. And it's Nicolas Berdiso, the offender. And it's the kind of way that Argentina were found out in Bolivia. Pace down either fringe. Just didn't come to terms on that occasion with the altitude. No such problems here, that's Arshavian. Couldn't quite get it for Kerjakov. Back from Simshov. Arshavian the captain. Can get hurried in defence, this Argentina side. We've uh, really experimented with a number of formations since Maradona has come into this coaching role, helped by Carlos Bilardo. Zanetti. Kurjakov looks hungry today. Across the city, he didn't have a great time last week when his club Dinamo uh, Eliminated from the Champions League at the third qualifying round stage by Celtic. We have quite a few strikers at their disposal for the first time in a number of years. Also, Pavel Pogrebniak, who we saw on ESPN on Friday night, beaten by Wolfsburg, but still impressive. He's among the substitutes too. And also, Selskar's young starlet, Alan Zagayev, who's still just 19. As of yet, they haven't got too much of the ball towards Diego Milito and Sergio Aguero. Anukov. Into the challenge. Uncompromising welcome for Igor Siemshov. Made his competitive debut, of course, for Marseille at the weekend, having returned to France from Real Madrid. Was with Paris Saint Germain, of course, before his spell in England with Manchester United. Ball from Denisov didn't help out Jan Bayer there. sure Maxi Rodriguez will be greatly enthused by it either. All of the signs in the early stages here that this is a friendly in 
Hey Malone. Here's Zanetti, cap number 133. They become a bit bitty all of a sudden. Much for the Belgian official Frank de Blake to concern himself with. Actually invited to Russia as a guest official a couple of years ago for a league game between Zenit and Lokomotiv. Also a public relations manager and Russian referees of late have needed plenty of that. Short ball from Arshavian. Zhirianov told to get back to his feet. No uncertain terms. That's going to flee in his ear as well from De Blake. Anyukov. Could be a big shot window this month for Jonas Gutierrez. Maradona has been speaking about how difficult it's been logistically to grips with life as a coach when he doesn't know quite what's happening at Newcastle United. Gutierrez, part of the attack at the start, which could have had a pretty decent end thanks to a pretty decent run from Sergio Aguero. Link-up play at the start of this game between he and Milito. That being the first instance. Mishevich did well enough to push him wide onto his stronger side, some may argue. A warning sign for Russia in defence there. Here's Igor Siemshov. Ginisov. Shavian has started as the link man between midfield and attack. Kaladin. Here the fervent support starting to transmit itself down towards pitch level. Nothing like that in the March game against Azerbaijan, which was at the Luzhniki. I heard a pin drop for the later part of that game. Which Russia won. That's in by Andukov. Pretty well dealt with by Katania's new goalkeeper. Liliana Andukhar. Winning his third cap tonight. A piece of decisive goalkeeping. Argentina have suffered something of the away day blues of late. Might just be half a football and indeed an evening of football in Moscow to help out their confidence levels as they hit the road. Still having to go to Asuncion and Montevideo. Sitting fourth in the South American standing so far, but haven't won since the end of 2007 away from home in a competitive fixture when they beat Venezuela. Some four out of six since. A catastrophic sequence. Meanwhile, go from strength to strength in their European qualification group. They're one point behind Germany. With Germany still having to play a game, the penultimate one of the round in the Russian capital. Germany in action tonight as well against Azerbaijan, a qualification game. 
Russia will hope for a favour from the former Soviet state. Here's Simshov. Excellent from Igor Simshov. Exactly the kind of way that Argentina have been undone in World Cup qualification games. And Igor Simshov finished with some style. The Zenit St. Petersburg man, given that role with which he can cause big destruction in the midfield. 16 minutes gone, and they just went missing from left back. Gutierrez was the nearest player there, but Nicolas Otamendi, so highly recommended for his performances in the Argentine top flight last season, has not covered himself in glory so narrow. And Simshov, from a tight angle, only appeared to have one thing in mind. Perhaps another nail has entered the early coaching career coffin of Diego Armando Maradona. Excellent move from Russia. difference between the Russia of the Hinnick days and those before his reign. Now they seem like a side that can score from any area of the field. Often see goals weighing in from the likes of Kaladin, centre half, who was a top scorer a few seasons back for his club. Also Ignashevich, set piece specialist from Sirska. And then Shemak and Girianov and Tsimshov. You'll know all about them by the end of the night. Pretty vocal in his uh, distaste for the arrangement of this fixture, Maradona. Like the idea even less when he heads back to the airport tonight. Side Diego Melito. Unfortunate to have the goal scrubbed off right at the end of the Super Coppa Italia. Quite rightly, as uh, Samuel Leto was interfering with play in an offside position, didn't touch the ball, but interpretation of the law being that he hindered the goalkeeper. Melito finished last season in exquisite form. Argentina's problems don't lie at that end of the field. And a big arm wrestle here. Aguero finding Anukov to be something of a match on that right side of the Russian defence. Argentina, the nation with pedigree. But Russia unbeaten in almost four years at home in international football. 13 matches in that time since Brazil walked away with a rather controversial 1-0 victory. Ronaldo goal that had more than a question mark of handball in the build-up. Finally a confidence boosting friendly this. Maxi Rodriguez. Argentine captain Mascherano has not had a great deal to get involved in so far. The midfield has been about Russia rather than Argentina. Goal scorer Simshov. It's one of the ten venues that. Russia would want to put forward for the 2018 World Cup Finals bid. In the Russian football fraternity, they see the fact that they're staging a game at home to Argentina as proof that they can compete with the likes of England for the hosting rights to that competition there. Our new stadium that will be built in Kazan, the home of the champions Rubin. In the state of Tatarstan, that will be up in about three years' time. Bidink has been a huge champion as well of that bid. 
Spends most of his football watching time in Russia in the capital, though. Would you believe this is only the second friendly that Hiddink has arranged since the end of that European Championship campaign? We're going rather well so far. Heinze. Ashrana. Forceful challenge from the no nonsense Tinisov. One quarter distance in this international friendly, live on ESPN. Feels like it shouldn't really be international season with the club scene just around the corner. Of course, in Russia, they have played 17 rounds of their season already, and in Argentina, well, they don't have a season at the moment because it's been cancelled for the foreseeable future, owing to several financial problems with the leading clubs. Can you imagine how Diego Maradona reacted to that? Let's just say he wasn't happy. So the Russian side lead this game by one goal to nil. Emphatic finish from Igor Simshov. I just wonder whether Andujar could have done better having got a hand to it. Arshavian involved in the build-up and he'll be involved as well as Premier League football comes to ESPN on Saturday from five o'clock. Arshavian back on Merseyside where he scored four goals against Liverpool on his last visit. Arsenal at Everton live on ESPN from five o'clock. Diego Milito. Mascherano. Sign of urgency here from Argentina. Enzo with the cross. Comfortable in the end for Akin Fev. Better delivery in. Argentina using the fringes again as they did to such good effect with Gutierrez earlier in the game. Maradona, on so many occasions, has dismissed out of hand the prospect of there being a World Cup Finals in South Africa next summer without Argentina. He seems to keep saying that the World Cup Finals would be quite dull without Argentina. Well, that much is true, but it doesn't really win you any qualification points, does it? Here's Kerjakov. Russia sure to bring quite a lot of colour to those finals. Still, they might have to go through a two-legged playoff. If Germany are to win their group. There is a real feeling around South America that the mighty Argentina might just be on their way to an almighty fall. 1970, the last time they failed to qualify. Once this might just be an international friendly. Highlights many of the reasons why they're struggling in the South American qualification section. Arshavin, very eager to play a most combative role in this game for Russia has thrown himself into every challenge. I'm not quite sure whether Asim Wenger, his club coach, will be delighted with that or not, given that Everton game we mentioned there. Here's Aguero. Just crowded out in the end. Good defensive work from Jan Beyev. Playing on his home turf. Lokomotiv represented with just he in the starting 11. form of plenty of the locomotive players. Dinar Bilyeletinov, integral to that Euro 2008 run. 
And Dimitri Torbinski as well. There's Kurjakov with their rivals Dinamo. Spring in his step. Been some light hearted moments in the build up to this fixture. In part a light hearted moment, uh, a dictum from the Russian Supporters Association regarding that World Cup qualifier in Cardiff next month. And can you believe that all Russian supporters were urged to drink as much Welsh whiskey as possible in Cardiff to ward off? Any effects of swine flu, which must be one of the best excuses for a tipple of the local brew that's ever been heard in international football. There's Arshavian. Might earn a drink if he continues to play in such a way. Kurjakov crowded out in the end. Milito. Gutierrez. Agent said that Olympiakos weren't as interested as it was made out recently, but I'm sure Newcastle United fans would have to keep hold of their left sided player. At least they managed to string some passes together there, Argentina. Shevian, so eager to make an impression, didn't have actually a great 2008 before joining Arsenal with Zenit St. Petersburg, played 27 matches for Dick Advocat, then at Petrovsky. And actually to be left out of a few matches after his head had been turned by speculation as to where he might end up playing his club football. You might recall that once Euro 2008 was still ongoing, and Shavian Painted a picture that he wanted to play for Barcelona. Well, here he's looking for an assist for Kurjakov, who has played in Spain before. But from a standing start, just couldn't nip the ball away from Zanetti. Don't they look fragile in the defensive third, Argentina? Ainsa, one of several players who has looked far better coming forward than going back in blue and white. Mbaev. Poor touch from Giuliano, uncharacteristic. Well read from Kaladin. You can see in the frustration levels of the Argentines that they are rattled here. I'm sure their recent history won't help in that regard. Cheers for the under-21 scoreline earlier today. Russia defeating Italy by three goals to two at Petrovsky, where the excitement is so great about this international friendly that they have erected a big screen. The fans who cheered the under-21s and stay on to cheer the senior side. Russia will play Liechtenstein in St. Petersburg. Northwest of here on the 5th of September before they go to Wales. The Russian and the 21 side achieve that with 10 men as well. Manchester United's Federico Maqueda starting for Italy's under 21 side. of innocence on the face of Gutierrez. Nukov eager to get his point across. Diminutive figure on Nukov. Often so dangerous when going forward. Often caught short when defending set pieces. Let's see how Akinfeyev with his club colleague Ignashevich and Kaladin 
manage this one. Maxi Rodriguez with the ball in. And in the end, it came to be a free header. Real opportunity for Inter's Nicolas Bertiso. A cleaner connection, it actually came off the back of his head. Cleaner connection, and Argentina would have been all square. Best chance for Argentina thus far. In Russia, now he's back, he can do no wrong. And it was agreed that he could take charge of Chelsea. There were protests, albeit minor, outside of the Russian Football Union. He didn't like it at all, he passed the litmus test. He had two matches with Russia whilst he was the Chelsea coach. And now he's popular again. A brittle time to be an international football coach. Is there ever anything different? Russia did get by Azerbaijan and Liechtenstein without any great ordeal, but the fact that they only saw off Azerbaijan 2 0 and Liechtenstein in Vaduz by one goal to nil. I believe hitting open to some criticism, especially in that time around about Easter when you'll recall there were several stories about hitting perhaps staying on. Well, he's pledged his allegiance to Russian football by even training the women's team ahead of their European Championship, which starts at the end of this month. There are some training sessions here at this Lokomotiv Stadion. Here's Giulianov. Second goal, and his hero status in Moscow will be elevated yet further. And Yukov have moved the ball very well, Russia. Arshavian. Shemak, who was captain during Euro 2008. Now Jan Baev. Argentina forced into almost a permanent retreat. Shemak once again. He's been getting on for 20 passes now. Ginisov. All it needs is an end product, and Yukov almost provided it. Kudashakov diving in at the near post. Looking to try and cement his place for the next round of international games. Ahead of Pavlyuchenka and Pogrebniak. Almost as if Russia were toying with Argentina during that move. Gutierrez. Aguero. Mascherano. Liverpool fans will know that he's not a regular on the score sheet. Rather tame effort in the end for Igor Akinfeev, the youngest player ever to represent Russia. 18 years and 20 days, still just 23. With a lot of experience, was a part of the Seskar side that became the first Russian club to win the UEFA Cup in 2005. Milito is screaming for the ball from Aguero. He might have picked a better option, but the finish was snatched at. Starting to hold the ball up much better now. Did at the start of proceedings here. Still, you sense much of the reorganization work is going on on the field. Argentina are rather sorting things out as they go along rather than any structured and coherent plan. The 
Serrano. Milito, better from Argentina. Pensive noise around the stadium whilst Argentina break away. Aguero really didn't know what he wanted to do with it. And Jan Baev can breathe a heavy sigh of relief in clearing the ball. You can almost hear the obscenities from Buenos Aires where they say just why is Maradona continuing to ignore Gonzalo Higuain? A move for Argentina indicative of their current mood. That of uncertainty. Good pace from Shemak. Yeah, it's something to put on your CV that you can at muscle Jonas Ruggieres. Even if it came at the expense of a free kick. Thirty-eight minutes so far at the Lokomotiv Stadion in Moscow. Come to show just perhaps how much Argentina will miss. Martin Di Michelis, who's out for six or seven weeks with an ankle complaint. With no football happening in Argentina, reserves of centre backs hardly going to be boosted in the coming three weeks. Mendy here has been all over the place. Burdiso and Heinze. Struggling, all propped up by Zanetti. Route one from Caladien. Argentina struggling to fashion chances and to compete with the Russian work rate, the ethos Russia have put together. Then what you might expect of a nation so large, still one that since the breakup of the Soviet Union struggled deeply in world competition. Eliminated from the group stage in the United States in 94 and in Japan and South Korea in 2002. Worse still, the other two competitions around that time, I didn't even qualify for. Here's Milito, might bounce up for Aguero. Really brave goalkeeping from Akin Feyev, but still the danger isn't clear. Gutierrez, run out of road. This is where Russia's lack of pace at the back was perhaps caught out. Almost too much time for Aguero to think about what he wanted to do next. And have a few words of advice from Diego Milito at half time. Maradona, not known for his man management of himself, never mind any other people, might be uh, best served to pull their chairs apart at the break. Serrano. Isn't his usual midfield stablemate in Voron here? Those of you who might remember, and Sebastian Voron has been rather expensive in his time in the Premier League. Note that he really has settled back in Argentina with his first club Estudiantes and even took them to the Copa Libertadores, the South American equivalent of the Champions League. A victory over Cruzeiro. Which in the second leg in Brazil, Belo Horizonte, he was quite terrific. Missing leaders here. Man who has the 
has the ability to be a leader brought down in Zanetti. A nice man of Argentine football. Seems to be one of the only people to have kept a consistent place in the coach's thoughts, whoever that coach may be. Incredible to rack up 133 appearances. Almost two years since he beat the previous record of Roberto Ayala. Mascherano. Or oh, better from Mascherano, but the angle's all wrong from Aguero, who you sense just didn't really expect the ball to come to him. And still, Akin Fev. Only had a couple of moments of note. I expect that we will see changes in the second half as both coaches have to trial a few options. That's A spat there between Arshavin and the newcomer Otamendi. Otamendi, who made his international debut in a friendly at the end of May against Panama, a game for which Maradona selected only players playing club football in South and Central America. He did really well, a man who impressed so much with. Velez Sarsfield in the Argentine title. The question is just how much football he'll now get between now and that big game against Brazil in Rosario. But Amendi sold short there and recovered well. Space for Aguero. Jonas Gutierrez has occupied a dangerous spot. Shane got it clear. Good engine on him for a box-to-box -box midfielder. Bolatti. The more space they have in midfield, the more we have seen glimpses of what Argentina are capable of. The final minute of regulation time in the first half. Ainsa. Only half cleared. Aguero! A terrific goal! Sergio Aguero for Argentina has acted out what the blue and whites have really threatened for the last 10 minutes. They were dragging themselves gradually back into the game. And the man from Atletico Madrid has just picked his spot and leaves Akin Fair helpless and indeed blameless. Inter with the first cross. Only half cleared by Ignashevic. That is a mark of real class from Aguero. I'm sure it will give him almost as much delight to be announced as Lionel Aguero on the Public address system. Sergio and Kroon Aguero equalises for Argentina. Now perhaps we'll see a different side in the remainder of this game. The first half, it's been very, very entertaining indeed. Russia in front through Igor Semshov after excellent build-up work from Andrei Arshavian, who has been Russia's most combative player of the first period. Argentina level in the final minute of regulation time through Aguero. Plenty to ponder for Messrs Hiddink and Maradona in the second half live coming up. It's Russia 1, Argentina 1 at half time. Russia won, Argentina won at half-time at the Lokomotiv Stadion in Moscow. 
And you have to say, it hasn't been what we've come to expect from international friendlies. It's been highly competitive. Argentina dragging it back after falling behind to Igor Simshov. Something of an experimental side for Diego Maradona with that Veron in midfield and Gago as well. But of course, they still have so much strength. And Sergio Aguero had their first opportunity 12 minutes in. Good link up play with Milito, something that Maradona will look at when it comes to that World Cup qualifier in Rosario against Brazil. Still with Lionel Messi waiting in the wings and Ezekiel Abitzi of Napoli here as well for this game. But a really good move. Aguero angered that the referee from Belgium didn't spot the little touch from Igor Akinfev. That was on 12 minutes, but Russia was starting to take a grip of midfield and open up some spaces at the back for Argentina, even though they were to equalise before the break. I have to say that in their defensive third, they haven't been strong. Note the presence of Arshavin at the start of that move. The last touch from Zhidyanov and Igor Simshov opens the scoring and perhaps at that stage, Diego Maradona has been rather outspoken in not wanting to play this fixture with so many important matches just around the corner and who have wanted the ground to swallow him up at that point. Really good finish from Tim Shaw. Kurjakov was in a really good position. The far post, but great interplay between the former Zenit St. Petersburg colleagues Arshavian and Chirianov. Almost a replica of what has been seen at Zenit in that title-winning season in that UEFA Cup campaign. Semshov, now of that club, applying the finish. As the half progressed, Argentina really did get into the game more. Nicolas Bordiso, one of the Inter players who has travelled from Beijing to feature in this fixture. Decent header. With the forehead or... Even the top of the head might well have taken it beyond back in fair and into the net. Russia caught short at the back through Kaladin and Ignashevich. Didn't really deter Russia, who have played their same game throughout the half. This time, Igor Denisov has been most combative, thrown in a few meaty challenges at the end of a move. Involved almost 20 passes, almost managing to get Kurjakov on the end of it. And Kurjakov has justified his inclusion ahead of Tottenham's Raman Pavlyuchenka and also ahead of Pavel Pogrebniak, now of VfB Stuttgart. Kurjakov really has thrown himself into the game. But still, Russia were to be pegged back by the interval. This is in the final minute of regulation time. Sergio Aguero with a fine and quite crisp strike. You can say that it had been coming as well. Russia sitting a bit deeper in midfield. Aguero picking his spot with fine, fine style. The Atletico Madrid man finished really well. And it's symptomatic of the goals that Russia have conceded at the start of their World Cup qualification campaign. With such a big gap between the central defensive positions in the midfield. Ignashevich poked the ball out to a blue and white shirt. So at half time, it's still all to play for. Both coaches still need a result. They still need a victory. It's Russia 1, Argentina 1. And of course, on Saturday, the Premier League comes to ESPN. Hello, I'm David Moyes. Hi, I'm Tim Cale. I'm Phil Neville. Watch us live. Everton versus Arsenal. At last, the wait is over. Live, live, live. ESPN. On ESPN. On ESPN. Welcome back to coverage of this international friendly from Lokomotiv Stadion in Moscow. Russia and Argentina inseparable at the break. Plenty of talking points from the first 45 minutes. And the half-time break for one Diego Armando Maradona will have been improved by the son-in-law doing a family favour. Sergio Aguero with the 
equaliser right on the stroke of half time. Still, we are no closer to finding out who will take the most confidence into their next World Cup qualification games. The major talking points from the first half, a really fine team goal for Russia on 17 minutes. Neat play, Arshavian involved twice in the build-up. The Arsenal man feeding Zhiryanov and Zhiryanov's club mate Igor Siemshov. Heaping pressure on Maradona because not for the first time they were caught short down the left-hand channel of their defence. That Otamendi link-up with Enza didn't really work. Argentina were thrust onto the back foot early on. Real vibrancy about the Russia play. Still, after this goal from Simshov, Russia were to be dragged level. Still, they will be confident after their first half. This was just about unstoppable for Igor Akinfeev. Mascherano of Liverpool involved in the build-up. And the man who almost became a Liverpool player after Manchester United, Gabriel Enza, with the ball in. Ignashevich with the half clearance. And a fabulous goal from the Atletico Madrid man. Maradona says it's given him a new lease of life to spend time with his grandson, who, of course, is the son of Sergio Aguero, the goal scorer. Aguero's goal may just add the oxygen into Maradona's lifespan as coach of Argentina. A finish which will at least help ward off that criticism for not selecting Gonzalo Higuain. A half-time change, we'll see a Premier League regular inserted to the fray. Roman Pavlyuchenka displayed his commitment to the Tottenham cause at the weekend by sticking around to feature in the final pre-season warm-up game for Harry Redknapp's side. He is on, and it's a straight swap with Sasha Kurjakov did his chances of playing next month no harm at all and for Maradona just the treble change we will see Lisandro Lopez inserted into the attack we will wait to see who has joined him Looked like Daniel Diaz the centre half underway for the second period Russia's second friendly in well over a year now. It's going quite well. The other one finished one each as well. That was against the Dutch. And Robin van Persie of Arsenal scored the goal for the Netherlands. Good move at the start of the half for Argentina. And what a perfect start inside 32 seconds. Maradona all of a sudden will look like something of a genius. Even he can't believe it. Really good build up play. And the substitute manages to tuck the ball beneath the body of Akin Feyev. And now Hushidink all of a sudden nears what would be a first defeat in Russia as Russia international coach. Sandro Lopez with a well-taken finish at the second time of asking. Did well to get inside the first challenge and on Yukov. Russia caught quite flat at the start of the second half. The man who has just signed for Lyon started the season in France. Helped Lyon out of a bit of a hole at the weekend. Scores what is Argentina's second goal in about 60 seconds of playing time. Now this great game can change. Now all of a sudden it's Russia who have to regroup. Perhaps a warning sign ahead of that game against Germany, which most onlookers are seeing as being the difference between a World Cup berth and a playoff berth. They have the class to punish the slightest of defensive errors. 
Sandro Lopez has done his selection claims. No harm at all. It's his first international goal. Still wearing a broad smile, the man who reached the quarterfinals of the Champions League, going out ultimately to Manchester United with Porto last season. State of shock around the Stadion Lokomotiv, which will be the home to one of Moscow's biggest derbies early afternoon on Sunday. Lokomotiv play Seska. Seska who went up to third at the weekend. Last minute victory that owed much to good fortune rather than good judgment against Amkar. Amkar, of course, who will be Europa League opponents for none other than Fulham. In the playoff round. First leg in eight days' time. So a busy schedule for many of these players. At least for Arshavin. Now Jan Baev wins a corner from the retreating Zanetti. Arshavin's schedule has been fairly manic with a friendly against Valencia at the weekend, followed by his trip here, then goes back to London and then up to the northwest. To prepare for that game against Everton, which will be live on ESPN from five on Saturday evening. Foul this time from the Russian captain. Made his club debut for Zenit St. Petersburg. Actually against Bradford City almost a decade ago in the Intertoto Cup. Respective paths of those two sides. Hardly be a greater paradox. Bradford City now in the fourth tier. Gutierrez. Maxi. Still a good engine on Zanetti. Despite his veteran status, 36 on Monday. Quick in the brain department too. Bolatti with the shot. Took a slight deflection off Kaladin. Made it comfortable for Akin Fev. Confirmation of the other substitutions. It's indeed Daniel Diaz, winning goal scorer against Colombia. It's a centre back by trade. Straight swap with Bortizzo. This foul that gives Russia the chance to press once more. Lisandro Lopez. Gutierrez. Really quick feet from Lopez down that side. Russia struggling to come to terms with the rather brisk interplay. Emiliano Papa, the final change at half time for the rather lacklustre Otamendi, who is his clubmate at Vélez Sarsfield. Argentina with three half-time changes. One of them has made the difference in the game and it could well have been a greater difference there. Perhaps I can fair a slight touch. Impassive hitting. Russia unbeaten in Russia since January 2006. Unbeaten in Russia under Hiddink. But hitting, as in the last two World Cup finals, always seems to have a way of getting out of jail. 
That's a delivery from the set piece for Argentina, but dealt with by Caladín. Kai Mascherano. Bellati playing higher up the field in the second half so far. Russia have tended to be stronger in the second halves of games. And a uh, sitting testament to their strength and also their fitness levels too, which have improved notably in the Russian domestic championship. Perhaps a greater emphasis now will be placed on the Argentine domestic championship if it gets back up and running again for Maradona's reserves of players. Now all of the South American based players who are selected in the squad will have played some part here. Zhidyanov. Now it's Ignashevich. The greatest virtue of the Russia team during Euro 2008 was their lack of a panic button, really. Never seemed to be unduly concerned when a deficit or a defeat came their way, as it did against Spain in the opening game. Lifted up and over the top from Denisov. Denisov, who actually refused a call from Hiddink to Apologies for your brief loss of pictures from our Lokomotiv Stadion. Just to conclude the point on Igor Denisov, player who refused the call after the injury to Pavel Pogrebniak on the eve of the finals, Arshavin proved to be a handful for most of Europe. Proving a handful for most of this Argentine side as well. It was his run that set up the chance for Simshov. Really bustling display here. Arshavian has quickly turned into its talisman. He was arguably its luxury player before Euro 2008 and the need to have perhaps a firmer shell. That link between midfield and attack. Zhidyanov with the header. Looking for the height of Pavlyuchenko. Alan Zagayev is going to be the latest player to be introduced by Kusidink. Similar levels of excitement about Zagayev and his talent. Creative playmaker turned striker you could say similar levels of excitement to those that were around Wayne Rooney around about 2002 when he scored that wonder goal for Everton at Goodison against Arsenal ironically the start to the Premier League season these two sides coming together again live on ESPN on Saturday from five o'clock Football from Denisov. Zhidyanov. Nukov is making a great run down the right, spotted by Arshavin. Now Nukov needs support in the centre. Too many in blue and white for his liking. Diaz got it clear. Denisov. Just a bit more of the holding role. A couple of surges forward into Argentine territory that seems to have the Russian fans awakened from their slumbers. And Yukov could have raised the decibel levels further. And he was torn between a cross and a shot. Pavlyuchenka 
was none too pleased. The Spurs man was in a great position. The difference between the side in front and the side behind is one of decision making so far. Maradona's decision to bring on Lisandro Lopez has certainly helped to give the visiting side the lead in this international friendly. Intensive hitting. The sidelines here. So we're going to have a change, perhaps on both sides at this juncture. Let me see. Maxi Rodriguez replaced for Argentina with Jesus Tatolo, who will play on the left side, you would imagine. Has also played briefly for Napoli on the right fringe. And Shimak of Rubian Kazan replaced by Alan Zagaev. Aguero. Not seen much of him in the second period so far. I haven't needed to. Space might open up for him as the game progresses. Wonderful finish again. It's within seconds. Really good finish, Argentina up by three goals to one. And Jesus Tatolo has marked his international debut with a goal inside of a minute of his introduction. Maradona looked hapless and now he looks hero. A status that he tends to revel in. Aguero helped to make it. Pull two players away from Datolo. Igor Simshov was one of them. He might not have been so sure that Datolo was on the field. An Argentine of Napoli helps out Naples' most favourite non Italian son. Convoluted it may seem. Argentina really don't mind. Now it comes, so long as it does, and it has. Maradona's 100% record in international friendlies. Half an hour away from being maintained. Since half-time, they've played really well. Pavlyuchenko doing the harassing. They say to be a good coach, they need an awful lot of luck. Is it luck or is it a great deal of tactical brilliance from Maradona? Well, you can make up your own minds on that. Two of his substitutes have scored and made immediate impacts. That's Arshavian. And there's bounce for the substitute Zagayev. Frank de Blaker agrees with Argentina that Vinicius controlled it with his hands. Now Argentina looked very, very hungry. Well weighted for Lisandro Lopez. Not quite on the same wavelength. As Aguero looked to feed the Lyon man. Jesus Tatolo, the scorer of the third goal, actually revealed that he was about to be called up by Maradona for a a proposed friendly against the rest of the world side but that was ultimately cancelled due to a three-way playoff in the Argentine domestic championship including San Lorenzo and Boca and Tigre now has his chance and you would imagine for the Brazil game that it's a straight shootout between he and Jonas Gutierrez on the left-hand side. Argentina need players with kind of impact. And El Diez, Maradona himself was able to provide. Maradona might now think this mission to Moscow was a good one. Good one after all. Going to call on 
another Napoli player now. Lavezzi places Aguero. I'm sure Abel Racino will be happy to note that his striker has come through seemingly unscathed. Argentina have done what few sides have done in recent times and silenced the Russian crowd. They could be quiet and further still, Lavezzi this time within half a minute of his introduction. There must be some kind of running in joke that we aren't aware of. Lopez scores within 33 seconds of the resumption after coming on at half time. Atolo even quicker. And Lavezzi pretty close as well on the breakaway for Argentina. They have plenty of pace. Datolo with the corner. Wry smile on the face of Enza, but it's out for a goal kick. Lots of football coming up on ESPN, of course, starting with the opening day of the Premier League season. Everton against Arsenal, fifth against fourth from last season. How will they start in this one at Goodison Park? It's live on ESPN from five o'clock on Saturday evening. One match not to miss, and also another one in the Clydesdale Bank Premier League in Scotland between Dundee United and Hearts. That's on Monday at seven o'clock. Arshavin, well, did the keeper take any of him there? Andujar. Arshavin was heading away from goal. Wasn't really a look towards Frank de Blaker of expectation that he'd get a penalty. In fairness to the Catania goalkeeper, did everything possible to withdraw. And the referee's got that right. Little whistles for Frank de Blaker. Would really have been a free route, not quite out of jail, but not far away for Russia had Belgian official pointed to the spot there. I think that the Russian crowd would be quite happy to see some decent refereeing after the season that they've had domestically. Apology after apology from Leading officials got the laws of the game wrong. Edouard Malay, not quite sure what your defence is from there. This is Tatolo. Zanetti. Looks as fresh in the 66th minute as he did in the first, the Interman. Serie A season still. Ten accused him of not wanting to play in the game, and it was quite a miserable time. Well, this is turning out to be much, much better. Navetti proving to be as threatening as Lisandro Lopez, Naguera, even Datolo before him. Good strength from Navetti. He only wishes that it was matched by the strength of his studs. Halted the momentum of that run. It's probably the best performance Argentina have managed to string together, certainly in the last 40 minutes in midfield and going forward. Under uh, Diego Maradona, very ordinary win beat Colombia back to home comforts on the 5th of September the former Boca Juniors player Maradona certainly uh, eager to take the game away from El Monumental Argentina's usual home the stadium of Boca's great rivals River Plate to the more intimate arena of Rosario Will be an intimidating atmosphere for Brazil. For that man, plenty to ponder. It's 
been a while since Russia have had a truly strong and competitive international. This friendly will serve them well in that regard, but not since playing Germany in Dortmund some 10 months ago have they really had to scrap and compete and battle. Second gear at times against Liechtenstein, that's Pavlyuchenka. Start to believe now that Russia are losing belief in themselves. Russia sixth in the FIFA World Rankings, but still so much respect bestowed upon their visitors here. supporters who packed out the Eduard Strelzov to just watch the Argentine players arrive because it was a closed training session. Also many of the Russian players who have spoken about what a matter of kudos it is that they're coming up against the Argentine players. Mike Savaguero, Maxi. Mascherano, when he wanted to come up against Messi as well. Well, he is just on a different planet at the moment, Lionel Messi. Again, Russia going to the high and hopeful. Kaladin, pretty strong from distance. Not the preferred route for Khosidink. Dean's absence in the European Championship semi-final and he felt a large contributory factor to their elimination left upon Ignashevich and Vasily Berezutsky to hold the fort that night Kaladin was suspended after picking up a yellow card excellent quarter-final win against the Dutch After which, even Vladimir Putin labelled Khosidin a lucky man, though he did it with a smile as well. He needs some fortune here. He's to square it up with Maradona's Argentina. Still 16 minutes to play. Zhirianov. Swiped clear and can fail on his weaker side. Bataglia wins the throne for Argentina, who aren't warming down themselves. Plenty of players looking to impress. Atolo and the now withdrawn Bolatti on debut. Argentina of the second half has looked far superior to that of the first. started it off Lisandro Lopez and now there will be a defensive change resting of legs perhaps and it will be a straight swap of center halves Denise Kaladin needs to be replaced by Vasily Berezutsky one of Zerska's twin brothers at the back but Vasily despite being the later developer of the two and the latest to come to prominence in the Russian game seems to get in ahead of twin brother Alexei not only at club level but also at international level greater frequency in recent years the monopoly of Silskar in providing defenders for the national team has been broken those shackles lifted off and now you can see completely different selection policy under Hiddink what had gone before. Referee waved play on. Sim Shov, this time he won't. Frank de Blake here, free kick Russia. And Yukov is the man down. 
Good advantage played by Frank de Blake. Now had Caledian still been on the field, he would have been favourite for this from the Master Blasters school of free kick artists. Zagayev pretty strong from this kind of distance for Siska, for whom he only made his debut a little over a year ago. Pavlyuchenka is part of the organization committee. Giriano there too. There will be no shortage of interested parties here. Hence Andujar. It's five in the wall. So Gaev, you would say, the expert at getting it up and down beneath the bar. Nishevich can also hit them in his former home ground. He's been muscled away and it will be Tottenham's Roman Pavlyuchenka. A chance to get Russia back into the game. Pavlyuchenka gets lucky. In off Daniel Diaz, Roman Pavlyuchenka has a goal that breathes life into this international friendly where Argentina looked likely to just kill it off. And perhaps restores parity in that individual race with Alexander Kurjakov for that second striking place in the forthcoming World Cup qualifiers. You have to feel for the goalkeeper Andukar, who was completely wrong-footed by the deflection. Russia 2. Argentina three. And in the end, given the wealth of free kick takers at Russia's disposal, he had to find the net to justify nudging aside Zagayev and Ignashevich. Turning out to really live up to its billing, this. If the FIFA World Rankings are anything to go by, this is a, a good marker of where England need to be at because, of course, Russia are sick, Argentina eighth, England wedged between them. Lots to be interested in for Fabio Capello, I'm sure. Russia needs to focus on defence before they can think about pressing for the draw. By Dattolo. A certain handling with which Jack Feyev has made a reputation for himself. It's good enough. Atmosphere now returns to Lokomotiv Stadion. Two sides who last met when Russia was still part of the Soviet Union. Argentina still had Maradona as a player. Would you believe that match took place at Old Trafford? Maradona injured and not involved. Some 18 years ago. And it was very, very tight. Oscar Ruggieri for Argentina equalised. Igor Kolivanov. Interesting tales about those two. Ruggieri was Maradona's hoped-for appointment as assistant coach of the national team, blocked by the Argentine FA president, Julio Grandona. It's led to those stories about Maradona perhaps resigning three days after taking the post, which would have been in real keeping with the rest of his career. Kolivanov, the under-21 coach of Russia. Pavlyuchenka got another deflection this time off Enzo. Anandukha thought he'd made up the requisite ground. Pavlyuchenka starting to turn the tables. Is it too little too late? Can it be sufficient for the popping of Maradona's bubble? Well, Russia won to draw, and so they stand on Stuttgart's Pavel Pogrebniak, striker 
And striker with height at that for midfielder. He got Siamshov, the scorer of the first goal, is withdrawn. Too deep for Pogrebniak. Out as far as Papiochenka. And Lucha needed to be and was indeed decisive. The flag was up in any case. It's been a terrific international friendly, this. Probably more questions than answers in many regards for both Hiddink and Maradona. Interesting to see what the respective coaches make of the experience. In front of a full house in Cherkisovo, district of Moscow. now like Arshavian will play for the 90 minutes Yenbaev solid game at left back in for the injured Yuri Zhirkov and it clear by Hintzer helps on towards Lisandro Lopez does have pace to matches quite intimidating physique not a good challenge from Anyukov. Rafael Benitez, if you're watching, look away now. Javier Mascherano made captain for Maradona's first game in charge at Hampden Park against Scotland. Because, in the words of Maradona, he would sweat blood for Argentina. To sweat blood there, but you have to give a fraction more than perhaps his club manager would like. And Yukov with the foul. Argentina looking for a chance to put the game to bed. Mishevich failed. You still feel that Hiddink never really expects to lose even from these kind of positions an enthusiasm and the confidence that occasionally you feel borders on recklessness. Self-belief that is certainly felt by the 11. The Russian colours out there. And Shavin. Clear by Gutierrez. Kept in by Anukov. Also used to play his club football on this ground. I like this man, Yanbaev. Yanbaev, not as creative as Zhirkov in the final third. But he's creative enough here to rather upset Jonas Gutierrez after he is penalised for the foul and for his little show of petulance. The Newcastle United man picks up the game's first yellow card. Friendly, what friendly? In the championship, a referee I think would probably call that shoulder on shoulder play on. We should have a free kick here though as a consequence. And Duhart added to the Melee of bodies at the near post, somehow Hintzer got it clear. Russia might just get one last chance. And Shevian. Sense now that Fritjerev is quite an angry man. Free kick from the Arsenal man, Arshavian, looking for Ignashevich, a play that works so often at Seska. did certainly in their run in the UEFA Cup last season, in which they managed to see off a rather under strength Aston Villa side. Ignashevich likes to attack the near post with a substitute who's joined him at the back, Vazili Berezutsky. 
driving on to the six-yard box from the penalty spot. The heart of their defence, Argentina, have improved as the game has progressed. But still, there are question marks. I'm sure that Dunga, the coach of Brazil, watching this coverage now and perhaps making note of all of them. Girianov. And Russia expose Argentina at the back for a third time. Girianov. Denisov. Full of graft and running Russia. Argentina with the flair and the pace of Jesus Datolo, who at the moment has the clinching and decisive goal in the game, scored less than a minute after his in introduction. The distinction that he shares in his game with Lisandro Lopez. Zanetti's little slip allowed for a bit of pantomime football there with Pavel Pogrebniak. Nambayev. Encouragement from the stands here, a ground that holds just over 27,000 people. A stadium that many pundits in Russia call Russia's best stadium. When you compare it to the Luzhniki capacity wise. It isn't a patch, but as a footballing arena. Generates atmosphere rather well. Something that Argentina will look to replicate in Rosario. Yes. Gutierrez, to his credit, has played since Jesus Tatolo has come on to the left hand side, has played on his weaker right flank. Has been a good shift from the Newcastle man. The question is, can he be considered as part of Diego Maradona's World Cup party if, if Argentina get there? If he's still playing in England second tier. A question that we'll have a resolution for sooner rather than later. Transfer window still with 19 days to run. Gutierrez. Gatolo. Mascherano. Deployed slightly deeper in the second half. Sense that it's been of some comfort to the central defenders on show. Three minutes of added on time, signalled. And on the sidelines. Three minutes for Russia to defend their proud record under hitting. An unbeaten record that stretches back some three and a half years and more. Tolo to the wrong end of the field from a Russian perspective at the moment. The Napoli man has done well to win a corner. It's been known in the past for Argentina to abandon common sense principles of football. Play with flair instead, but they know how important this victory would be, not only to themselves, but also El Diego. Some 30 years ago, Diego Maradona won the FIFA Youth Championship as the golden ball winner, the man of the match in the final against the Soviet Union in Tokyo. Since then, so many of these players have followed his path, most notably Aguero, who 
equalised right at the end of the first half here. Leo Messi as well. Is Maradona starting to find his feet or is it a false dawn? Time will tell us, but this performance will certainly indicate that the FIFA World Cup finals in South Africa will be a far better place if Argentina do make it through. Gutierrez in the center waiting for some productivity from Jesus Dattola, who's done so well. Headed away from Jan Baev, who was the last man standing at the far post. He's certainly done his hopes. The future appearance is no harm at all. Standing in for Chelsea's Yuri Zhirkov. Into the final scheduled minute of additional time. It's been a valuable exercise, I'm sure, for both nations hasn't been what we have come to expect from international friendlies. A game that curiously has been enhanced by multiple changes. And that from a pretty decent start, rather than one which sees mass substitutions detract from the spectacle. It is the end of an era for Russia in some regard. The end of their unbeaten run at home and of who's sitting. And perhaps the start of a brand new era for El Diego, who didn't really want to come here for this international friendly, but has the added bonus of some extra confidence to take into a World Cup doubleheader against Brazil and Paraguay that he desperately needs. Aguero, Lisandro Lopez and Jesus Datolo, the scorers for Argentina. Two men making an immediate impact after a change from Maradona. It had to be about the coach, didn't it? Sim Shov and Tottenham's Pavlyut Jenka for Russia. Full-time at Stadion Lokomotiv. Russia 2, Argentina 3.